Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. So in my last video I talked about the importance of rhythm in plot structure and pacing and if you haven't seen that video you should probably go back and watch it. But I wanted to break out rhythm in dialogue into its own video because it's so important and so often overlooked. So I've been running a community writers workshop for the last four years and a lot of the people there have been coming every week for a good number of those years and they've all gotten so much better like they impress me every day. But the one complaint I hear from them most often is that their writing just doesn't sound professional. Like the writing they find in their favorite books is somehow fundamentally different from the stuff that they can put down on paper. And I think most people who have ever tried to write creatively can relate to that. But when I ask them what this means, what I hear most often is that they just don't know enough big words. Because there's this impression that the thing that separates amateurs from the true professionals is the verbosity of their vocabulary. But I'm here to call bull on that because the thing that really makes the difference is rhythm. Now people often separate poetry into its own category of writing. There's essay and fiction and all that other stuff over here and then there's poetry over here and we keep that separate. Only the poets touch that. But every writer has to be a poet. Every writer has to be concerned with how their sentences flow together. Now if you've never seen the movie Brick, uh, don't worry about it because I'm not gonna touch the plot at all. The film is a sort of neo-noir kind of crime story and as such has some of the best and most rhythmic dialogue that I've ever seen in a film. It's that thing that makes everybody sound smart or important or like they know what they're talking about. It's the thing that makes you want to rewatch the movie because it just sounds so cool. I know I usually like to give you concrete examples of these things from the text just so you know I'm not crazy, but the only way to do that with this one is to play clips from the movie and I'm not trying to get flagged. Just go watch it yourself. It'll be obvious what I'm talking about. But this next example is a little more video friendly. We the Animals by Justin Torres is a quick dark coming of age story about three young boys growing up in a volatile household. And while the story is definitely compelling and heart-wrenching, there's nothing really about the plot that makes it all that much different from any other really sad coming of age story that's been written. But what makes this one of my favorite books of all time is in the way that it's written. It's not a long book. Technically it's not even a novel. It's more just a series of vignettes. But as you start reading it, it quickly becomes very difficult to tell what you're reading. Is it fiction? Is it poetry? Like you can literally open to any place in this book and find a perfect example of why rhythm is so important. And no, I'm not just doing it this way because I didn't prepare. Mm, look, perfect. There was a pause as we gathered ourselves. Then we mamboed as best we could, trying to be smooth and serious and to feel the beat in our feet and beyond the beat to feel the rhythm. Let's listen to that one more time. There was a pause as we gathered ourselves and we mamboed as best we could, trying to be smooth and serious and to feel the beat in our feet and beyond the beat to feel the rhythm. Did you hear that? Writing without rhythm is like serving poorly seasoned vegetables. They could be the best, most beneficial things in the world for you, but if they taste like crap, nobody's gonna wanna eat them. But if you hit it with the salt and the garlic and the spice, they'll eat it happily and come back for more. They'll tell their friends they should try it. Now for this stuff, there's a lot of practical advice to give. Some of it I think might be too practical. Like, the rhythm of your sentence is determined by where the stressed syllable in a word falls in relation to all the other stressed syllables in the sentence. It's very Shakespearean. Like, some of his best work was written in iambic pentameter. His? Hers? Theirs? If you want an official definition of that, look it up. But basically it's da 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 it was all about the number of syllables in the sentence and where the stress falls. And if thinking about it like that works for you, great. Keep thinking about it like that. But I find that if I'm thinking too hard about the rhythm of my sentences, I can actually go in the opposite direction and everything starts to sound contrived. In my opinion, rhythm is something that you have to internalize. You don't wanna be writing down every sentence and stopping to think, is this right? You wanna be able to feel that it's right. So my soft advice, start listening to rap a lot. Tons of different artists. And when you do, think about which ones sound good to you and which ones don't. Which ones sound professional and which ones sound amateur. Because the thing that sets them apart is their flow. It's the rhythm of their lines. Sure, your story may be the best, most innovative, creative thing in the world, but if it doesn't flow, 
no one's gonna wanna read it. Oh, and one last piece of advice. Never call anything done unless you've read it out loud, because I guarantee if there's a problem with your rhythm and you read it out loud, you'll find it. Thanks so much. This has been Left to Right. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, let me know down in the comments, how do you control for rhythm? How do you find the rhythm of your sentences? How do you make sure it sounds good?